Off season? What off season? Not around here at Up and Adams. We have a packed show for you today. How about this? NFL draft prospect, Auburn running back Tank Bigsby. Cam Newton was at their pro day just yesterday. He joins us. Is he the top running back in the draft? We will make that case. Plus, we have a 13-year veteran. A head coach in the NFL just texted me, great leader. I'd love to talk to him. He was with the Texans, then the Broncos. The great Kareem Jackson is on the show. And our good pal, the one and only Rob Gronkowski. Oh, boy. What is Tipsy Cup? We'll find out. Gronk, 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 gronk. There's a full bar here where I am in New York. It's like the best studio I've ever been in. So we're going to have a Moses here on the show. Kareem Jackson joins him. And we will have Tank Bigsby on the show of Auburn. So much to go on. But we are still freaking waiting here. I thought maybe I'd come to New York. I, I reached out to Aaron Rodgers. I said, I can help. I literally did. I said, I can help figure this out. Do you need me to do some apartment shopping with you? Are we looking West Village? Are we looking Tribeca? Are you trying to be close to the facility? Uh, Jets, do you want me to come in and sort of help with this? I have a great relationship with the Jets organization. Didn't? Why are you saying no? No. I mean, every time you come to New York, everything falls apart. You go to the Knicks game, the Knicks lose. I'm surprised the deal hasn't fallen through already. I'm sorry. I think Julius Randle saw that I was sitting courtside and said, I'm going to ball out for Kay Adams out there on the floor. Shh. We'll get to Hamilton in a second. But here's the deal. The Jets and the Packers have yet to truly solidify things and figure things out. Packers president, uh, the verbal, sort of like very chirpy Mark Murphy, did tell reporters yesterday that he is quote, sworn to secrecy when he was asked about the potential trade. So while everyone involved in that situation is keeping things close to the best, we did get an interesting little nugget of information uh, about the Niners yesterday. Ben Roethlisberger, we haven't said that name in a long time. Big Ben told Mark Madden of 105.9, the X, love to shout out and credit people who are doing excellent work out there. He said it in Pittsburgh on the radio that he was in conversations about heading to San Francisco after Jimmy G went down. Ben said he ultimately couldn't see himself in anything but black and gold, and obviously things worked out pretty well for the Niners as they went 8-0 and in games that Brock Purdy was able to finish healthy. It is, it is fascinating about, if you, if you really consider how close we came to Purdy mania, which was one of the main themes of last season, not happening. And it also makes me think about how far we still are, are away from finding out who's going to be the running, uh, the in the running for running the show at quarterback in the Bay next year. Will Purdy be recovered from elbow surgery in time for week one? They know better than we do. I'm not a doctor. I'm not going to speculate. What about Lance? Lance isn't exactly 100% healthy. He's got an ankle injury. Who is a higher floor? Who is a higher ceiling? These are conversations that are happening. But in that room, it's got to be hard. Even, even with the elbow injury, it's got to be hard to say, we got to put it all behind Trey Lance. We used a high draft pick on him. He maybe has the higher ceiling, better potential. When you have everything you saw in those games, those eight games with Brock Purdy, when George Kittle is coming on the set saying, I'd basically run through a wall for Brock Purdy. He's got the team. You don't really hear those things about Trey Lance. The health is going to be the swinging factor, but uh, it, it, Shanahan loves this situation. Deal one of them away. Do some, don't be in the situation where you're game planning for both guys. Also, with both guys not healthy, let's not pretend really quick that that doesn't matter for offseason. Stats Guerrera, amazing new podcast that he has, uh, and I went on his podcast and was chopping it up with him about this, and he made the great point of, like, Brock Purdy won't be able to practice with any of these guys. These guys are, you know, tight end university. That's something George Kittle's doing. All these guys are making these things happen and wanting to have this chemistry. Every little bit matters, every ounce of competitive advantage. And they don't really have that with Brock Purdy this off season. So what do they do? You'd like to see Kyle go into April committing to one guy and at least having that be the thing, what? He, he, he's, he's not saying player. anything. He's playing it so close to the vest right now as he historically has done, so we don't really even know which one he it's prefers. It's like, does he just want to show he's this mastermind? And does he just want to be like, I can make game plans for both of these guys, it doesn't matter? Does, it think, does he think it gives him some sort of advantage? I don't know what's going on. And, by the way, they bring in Sam Darnold, which makes me, by the way, think it's Brock Purdy. Uh, and, and what does that mean? Who is the loser of the quarterback battle? Does the loser get traded uh, to make it a little cleaner in the Bay Area? I think we're getting to a make-or-break point for the Niners and this quarterback experiment. They've gone all in to construct a near perfect roster while investing just 6% of the, the cast space into the quarterback spot between three guys. So this roster is at its peak. 
I don't know why they didn't make a bigger swing for Aaron Rodgers. I'd like to know that information. I think like that would make them the Super Bowl favorite in everybody's eyes. So it's interesting with Kyle Shanahan's brilliant, brilliant play calling and John Lynch's ability to amass talent. The Niners, they have more than proven they can contend without shelling out top dollar for a quarterback. Is that the point? Is that what they're trying to do? It's clear to me Shanahan does not value the quarterback position like everybody else does. It's just true. Not in this franchise, not under his helm, and neither does John Lynch, and they agree on that clearly. Um, they can't end this season without a Lombardi. If they can pull it off, they end up revolutionizing the way that teams amass quarterbacks and the value they put on these rosters and these you know, approaching quarterback contracts and all that. But if they can't, it is the biggest disappointment. All we're going to hear is why didn't they go after Aaron Rodgers? How could you not nail down the quarterback spot and get it right? I personally believe in what the Niners are doing and in the guys they have at their disposal in that quarterback room. What they did to their D-line is insane this offseason, and it was already great. So as I said before, I think this kind of has to be the year for them. And I will say it again, Cleveland Farrell. I'm, I'm a fan of his. I'm cheering him on. I really think bolstering and having so much talent at the other positions is finally going to get the best out of him. And we've seen Shanahan and we've seen those defensive coaches get the best out of guys that have already been sort of looked over and picked apart on other teams. So it's a, it's a weaker NFC than it has ever been. If you guys don't get there and don't win it, I don't know what I'm going to say to you. But I believe in what the Niners are doing. Your thoughts at Up and Adam Show. Let me know what you think. Uh, Hamilton, why don't, oh, I have to call him for a slide out of here. Ready? That's pretty good. <laughs> That's kind of what Collins with. Chris kind of just goes... Okay, we're going to sit here. Here's our, um, in our amazing studio um, yes. uh, here in New York City. Uh, what do you want to talk about? Before we go to break. We got a big um, show. A lot of guests. We do have a big show, and you've had a big week here in New York, from what I've heard. I've not slept. Can, can you can you tell? I haven't slept at all. I've been drinking a lot of coffee. I'm ha I'm just a different energy when I'm here. We went, we had yeah. lunch yesterday. It was nice. Yeah. It was. He took me to Sugarfish for the first time, and they made it so easy. You just oh yeah. You just <laughs> Rich is going. Oh yeah. You just go and you say I want. I want the trust me. Yeah. I had the trust me light. It was a delightful experience. Yeah, they just bring everything out. You don't even have to think. I took all of the fish it. off of the rice and just ate the rice, and Hamilton took all of the fish and, and took threw the rice away, and that's why we're best friends. It's just sort of <laughs> how it happens. Um, <laughs> last night, you know what I feel like? I feel like um, Jimmy Fallon. Last night, I'm going to put this right here. Like you put it right here. I caught a show. Uh, I don't know that it's actually, I think it was a preview show. It's an Aaron Sorkin um, I'm going to say a musical called Camelot. It's so good. A lot of I saw a lot of famous Broadway actors, uh, actors and actresses. The lead, Guinevere, is played by um, who was the original lead in Hamilton, okay. which I love. It's very funny. But I have, I mean, I got to tell you, wasn't was it Rookie of the Year with Henry Rowan Gardner that had Merlin in it? What movie from our '90s childhood had some sort of like Sword in the Stone vibe to it? You don't remember? I don't remember. I'm telling, there, ha there is something like that, and I'm going to find what it is. But I found myself, like, I don't know anything about the Knights or the Round Table or anything. And I, uh, and I th caught myself thinking, like, is this based on a historical thing? Was Camelot a real place? Was there a King Arthur? Is that yes, and so was Game of Thrones. <laughs> um, you know, Daenerys rode that dragon in and destroyed King's Landing. And, um, yeah, yeah, that, that all like really whole, happened. So this is whole, but, but it's not a different place. It's not Westeros. It's England and France. Yeah. So I have a feeling King Arthur was real, right? Excalibur maybe wasn't real. That th that thing was whatever. I'm sure there's some basis in some historical reality, but I'm pretty sure it's all fictional. What did you say, Richard? Scholars say it's fiction. So there was no King Arthur. There was no Queen Guinevere. And then Lancelot. I'm sitting there like, why did the, why did the rapper Sir Mix-a-Lot name himself after Lancelot? That's what I was thinking the whole time. I was like watching, and Lan he was very like uh, uh, confident, and, and I, but I was you know he clearly watched maybe potentially the the origins of what this was. Anyway, go see it when it's out. I feel like I'm Kelly Ripa. Go see it when it's out, uh, Camelot here in New York City. What else did I do? You went to a Knicks game. Yeah. I went to a Knicks game. Julius Randle saw me and said, I'm going to put up a million points. No one played defense. And let me tell you, if NBA teams want to start putting up points like that, I thought they were both going to score 100 at the half. I truly didn't. I said, I'll come to every game I've ever, uh, ever. I never go to uh, basketball games at all. But everybody was there. Spike Lee was there. Leslie Jones was there. Fat Joe was there. I sat next to Dave. I mentioned David Lee on the show. David Lee is sitting next to me. And then who is he sitting next to? Al Harrington. Al Harrington. And, and Bobby Bacala. I, I, I'm sitting next to Bobby Bacala. 
That w was viral because I had never watched The Sopranos, and it was uh, it was a lot. You were not happy with that. Yeah. There he is, I mean, sitting next to someone from The Sopranos. I never watched it, and everyone went, and then everyone was uh, talking about trains and conductors. Yeah, the, he, he has a rough history with trains, as we talked about this morning, too. Laundromats were a traumatic experience for him as There's well. There's David Lee! David Lee and Al Harrington. You love to see it. Did he play for the for the um, for the team that Steph Curry plays for too, David Lee? Yeah, he played for the Warriors after I the know, Knicks. The he NBA. was drafted to the Knicks and then. See ya. Okay, we gotta later. get out of here because right. we have. Oh my gosh, is this the best running back in the 2023 NFL Draft? Take Bigsby. He's got the strength. He's got the speed. He's coming fresh off his pro day. Tank Bigsby on the show after this. Can't wait to get to know him. We're, yes. Oof! Four, four, six. This is the Auburn Pro Day. You, they can't even keep the camera on him. He's moving that fast. We have an NFL draft prospect on the show today. He is an incredible one. It's one to keep an eye on, potentially the first running back off the board. 2021 SEC Freshman of the Year and running back for the Auburn Tigers. He racked up, let me just get this right, over 2,900 yards, 25 touchdowns in three years wearing navy blue and orange. Tank Begsby, good morning. How you doing? Good morning. <laughs> Good. I wish I, my name's Kay. I wish my name was Tank. It wasn't always Tank for you, though. It was Cartavius Bigsby. Somewhere along the way, you adopt this persona, this nickname. What's the origin story of Tank? So uh, growing up, I was in the rec league, and my mom was at the game, and uh, I was running the ball. My helmet came off, and I continued to run and scored a touchdown, and I came to the sideline, jumped with my teammates, and she had looked at me, and she said, you're running like a Tank. So from that day forward, it's just she's been calling me Tank. And that was like when I was like seven, eight years old. So ever since then, I've been called Tank. And she was right. You scored 10 touchdowns last year, 25 in three years as this running back for this big school, this incredible program. You are clearly excited to get to the NFL and see what kind of damage you can do as a Tank there. When you look at your time at Auburn and those three years, whether it was on and off the field, football or otherwise, what was your favorite memory? Hey, remember it was with my teammates, you know, and being around Coach Cadillac. Uh, he he taught me so much, and he he just he's so he's a great guy in general. Like he just he 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 feeds you great energy. He teaches you great things, and uh, my teammates uh, just competing together, being in Jordan Hare. You know, I never forget that. That was one of the greatest moments in my life. Just playing there, hand that crowd under my feet. It, it's. Jordan Hare is different. The crowd, you can hear the crowd shaking. Like, it's its nice. And um, those are some of my favorite memories at Auburn. The fans, I love them. They, they have your back. And uh, it's just, it's something great to, uh, to do in life. You know, go, uh, go to Auburn is something that, that's, that's great. Like, I always wanted to play there. And um, it's a goal that I accomplished. And I, I love that school to death. You can tell that it means something to you. And now you're trying to go to the NFL. You go to Indianapolis, you have a great combine, but I am hearing from people I know, from things I'm reading, even rave reviews from your pro day performance yesterday. And you showed, even from the combine, a lot of improvement. They clocked you, like we said, mid four fours. You crushed it in your positional drills. What was the key to taking things to another level yesterday? Well, just just locking in, just um, focusing on myself, being me. You know, at the combine, there was a lot of stuff going on from we doing uh, medical, we doing testing, we doing all type of stuff. So, you know, I could fo I was able oh. to focus on football. I was able to focus on my myself. You know, and uh, went out there and I accomplished what I had to accomplish. Had the mindset of being dominant, and I told myself that's what I have to do. So I went out there and handled my business. Thank you, thank you, really. And you mentioned your business. You were caught saying something about your time to make that money. What did you say? Yeah, I was uh, I was warming up, talking to myself. You know, I, I have these times when I just tell myself and build my self confidence up. And I be um, I was talking to myself, and I said, "It's time to make this money for." It. And uh, everybody called me four on my team. See, everybody like the media called me Tank, but I call myself four sometimes. And uh, like I said, it's time to make this money for. It. And uh, I locked in and uh, I just blocked all the noise out and just went went ahead and did what I had to do. You said you call yourself, what did you say? I call myself four, the number four. four. They'd be like, what's up four? What's up four, yeah. So like the guys on the team, yeah. they'd be like four, 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 what's up four? And, uh, and they called me tank too, but just a quick term of four, because I've always been number four. 
and they called me four. Yeah. Well, you ran about a four. You ran about, I mean, the camera could not keep up with you when you were smoke. I mean, it was amazing. And then the other thing is you have a, 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 a college legend, but an NFL legend in his own right, Cam Newton out there, an MVP in the National Football League. Uh, and he was there yesterday. He, you know, he, he wants to get back into the NFL as well. What did you notice or pick up from just being around him even? What was that experience like? He's himself, you know, he's comfortable wherever he at because he's he's like he's himself and um he always bring it energy, he always been positive. You know, uh, when he was throwing the ball, he dapped me up and he was like, Let's go, bro. And I'm like, Yeah, let's go. And um and just being around the Auburn legend who did it before me, that speaks about Auburn and let you know how we are. We're family, we always can come back to each other. We like a brotherhood and um Cam Newton is he's a great guy. Uh his energy great. He had told the people, he said, hey, man, it's dead. They had turned some music on. So they, they had turned the music on. <laughs> he just started doing his thing. I mean, he, they call him Superman. I don't know if everyone can see if you can lift up your shirt. thats You've got the anti-hero. You're rocking the Spawn villain vibes on the show this morning. What's that about? Uh, I like I like graphic, shirt, graphic shirts a lot. Um, I've got a, I have a lot of them. And, um you know, I'm just a graphic guy, and uh, I wear a different type of stuff. My favorite hero is probably Batman, you know, because he just was different, sneaky, and uh, kind of low-key. He wasn't in the mix everywhere, flying everywhere, shooting people with spider webs and stuff like that. So he was, um, that was my favorite hero growing up. But I just, I love graphics. I love stuff that, that means something or, you know, you can tell, like, it catch your attention. Yeah. You're a graphic guy, you're a speed guy, you're a, also a family guy. We're gonna talk about that because you and your mom, uh, you guys grew up in LaGrange with your family and when that moment comes and you're with them, I, I, I heard that you'll be decided hanging out with them there on draft weekend. What's the one word to describe what it will be like taking that moment in with them when you find out where you're gonna go? Uh, I'm sure it'll be a, a feeling that you can't explain. You know, you've been working all your life to get where you're trying to be at right now. You know, out of 100% of people, it's 1% lead. It's a 1% lead. You know, not, a lot of people don't get this opportunity. And I feel like that that right there would be a feeling that no one can understand. Like, it's just a feeling like when I go out there on the football field, a feeling pop up that's unexplainable. And um, I'd be so happy, you know, wordless and uh you know I, I know my mom gonna be right by my side that's like my best friend and um you know we we've overcame a lot of things and adversity so I feel I feel like it's gonna be great for us do you think you'll you should go number one at the running back position does it matter to you and or what is important to you about that night and where you go you know just getting in a great scheme and uh if I can be me, you know, uh, play ball. I want to play ball for a long time. I want to get around guys that actually love football, that actually want to be where they at, where they feet at. And um, you know, you know, people um, people ask those questions all the time about how you feel about the process, how you feel about your ranking, how you feel about. I really, I never been the guy to type pay attention to those things, and I just I like to show up and do what I have to do and uh, be my best every time I get an opportunity because you never know it's when your last you never know when it's your last opportunity to play football and um so I always just every time I get an opportunity I try to go 150% every time is there something you want, you know, coaches will see this. This will be all over Twitter, of course. It'll be, you know, we're, we're live on a show that you guys are looking, and I know that they've picked apart everything, your combine interviews, all of that. What do you want everybody out there to know when they're making these decisions on their board about what is special about Tank? Well, you're getting the best player like me. I'm bringing my best every day. Um, I'm the type of guy trying to be as consistent as I can be. And um, 150%, like I was just saying, I go hard every day. That's the only stride I know. Yesterday I was doing receiver work and then I had to go right to running back work work and then it was like, you want a break? I was like, nah, we can keep going, we can keep going, let's get it. And um just working, you know, I'm a I love to work. I wanna be around guys that love to work too. So when you get in me, you get in one of the best and you're gonna get my best effort every time. You're wearing the Spawn villain shirt. We're talking superheroes. We're talking Batman, all of that. What is Tank Bigsby's superpower? What is your, like, best thing, your best skill that you would say that is? My best skill, I would say, is 
like on the field or off the field? What would you say? Either. Either? Well, I feel like I can really cook. <laughs> but on the field, I feel like a beast. You know, I feel like I can run through people. I feel like I can run past people. I feel like I can juke people. Uh, I feel like just elusive. I feel great on the field. It's like, like you said, it's like a power just go behind your blood and you just like, okay, it's time to go. <laughs> now, did you mean you could cook, like you cook on the field or you can cook, cook like in the kitchen too? Both. <laughs> I can what do is, both. What is the go-to meal? Uh, I love to cook pasta. You know, we cook all types of pastas and uh, uh, I don't, I, I don't, I never really grill my steaks. I put them in the oven and I like leave them out all night and I like make them soft, I tender them and all that stuff and I just put them in the oven and they be real tender and they be great, you know. Wow, penne a la tank. Listen, there's 32 teams that need running backs, and you're talking about a guy who can cook. Your mom obviously taught you well. You've got your head on straight. You've got, I can tell that you've got, a, you've, you're a hard worker. You've got a chip on your shoulder, though. Like, you, I know that you want you want what you want, and you're going to go get it, and you can cook on the field as well. Four, four-ish, 40 at your pro day yesterday with Auburn. You're going to be in front of the media a lot, and you're going to handle it really well in the league over the next couple of years. But I'm going to be, we're going to do a quick uh, one minute rapid fire as many questions as you can answer they're all super fun so uh, these are sort of just to get to know you and get your favorites okay let's get a minute on the clock favorite cheat meal uh you said favorite cheat meal yeah uh, I, said, I go i probably go get chipotle chipotle i like that favorite workout uh i would say leg day okay favorite nfl player of all time Time, girl. <laughs> wow. Favorite NFL team? Atlanta Falcons. Okay. Uh, who wins who wins in a race in their prime? Bo Jackson or Deion Sanders? Bo Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> Auburn! Uh, Apple Music or Spotify? I say Apple Music. What what you're the one. Wow. Favorite superhero? Uh Batman. Favorite show right now? Uh, BML. <laughs> I've never even heard of that. What is that? I don't even know what that is. What is that? Oh my God. You have to look it up. It's a great show. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's what a is great it show. called? BML. BML. I got to write it down. I have no idea. I have no idea. Yeah. Okay. Tank Bigsby, you are going to crush it in the NFL. I already know you're going to be on my fantasy team. I already know. I already know. Go get in the best scheme. Have the best time. We will support you. We're so excited to have you in the NFL. Congratulations on your pro day show out for Auburn just yesterday. And hopefully you can get some rest. Thank you, Tank. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Great to meet you. We are now Tank fans here on the show. We will be back right here on Up and Adams. Lots of uh, fun guests. Kareem Jackson might join us. We might have Gronk on the show. Do not go anywhere. It's time we're introduce you to some intriguing prospects in the 2023 NFL Draft. Who are you looking at? Jackson Smith and Jigba from Ohio State. He's a wide receiver, and you need to know a couple of things about him. He's a very interesting case, okay? Because if you look at the numbers, they're kind of like, what happened here? Five passes. You caught just five passes in all of 2022. Here's the deal. He missed the entire season with an injury. It was a hammy. But he's still universally considered a top three receiver in this draft because of how spectacular and eye-popping he is when he is on the field. So let's go back to 2021 for just a quick sec. Ohio State's receiving core loaded. They had newly minted offensive rookie of the year, Garrett Wilson. They had Chris Olave. Jackson Smith and Jigba is just sort of in that world. He led, guys, he led that trio in receiving, right? So we're talking about the Garrett Wilsons. We're talking about the Chris Olaves. His fully healthy game, his last one, was the Rose Bowl against Utah that year. He put up 347 and three touchdowns in that one. It was bananas. Garrett Wilson Wilson, he has not been shy about calling Smith and Jigba the best of that talented group. He calls him the best. Think about that. He actually went as far as to call him, quote, the most natural athlete I have ever seen. That's super impressive and eye-popping if you ask me. And the praise doesn't get much loftier and the ceiling clearly is about as high as it gets, but some GMs probably 
have him a little down or maneuver him on the draft board a little bit because he missed nearly the entire 2022 season. So it'll be very interesting to see how he's viewed, who's willing to take a swing on the potential. Just as a reminder though, the last top tier receiving prospect to face these kind of questions was of course, where's number one? Jamar Chase. He opted out at LSU, as we all remember. I'm gonna just say, fair, fair to uh, state that he has done pretty well for himself. It's worked out for, for him in this case. So hopefully that sort of sets the precedent for Jackson's favor come April. There's uh, one thing you need to know about Jackson Smith and Jigba of the Ohio State. Highly touted, teammates love him, and he's got all the potential in the world. We'll be back. Welcome back to Up and Adams. We are waiting for Rob Gronkowski to stop by the show. Cream Jackson, train is late. Listen, I understand because <laughs> I don't even live in New York anymore, but I know how long it takes to get from Tribeca up to Midtown, and I have uh, really been at the buzzer all week long in getting here, but we're having a lot of fun in New York City. I was trying to get Sauce Gardner on the show. I was trying to get Bob, what is Bobby? Bacala. Bobby Bacala. What's his true name? Uh, Steve Sharepa. I would be annoyed if I was known by my character name. But he's one of the, yeah. But he's, so he's on Blue Bloods apparently. That's what everyone's, uh, everyone's tweeting me about, that that's what uh, he's doing. We were trying to get him on. We potentially might get him on next week and talk about how lame I am for never having seen The Sopranos. I will be watching The Godfather per John Rothstein, who said that that's my homework before he comes on the show. I will be cheering for Texas. That is uh, my Sweet 16 attorney vibe. Gronk's gonna be on our show a little bit later. We're gonna play a game uh, that in the production meeting was called uh, How to Make Kay Look Dumb on Live Television. I think that's the name of the game here because they're going to show me and Gronk NCAA mascots and we have to guess what school they belong to. So that's going to be a miserable fail by all accounts. Uh, I also want to know like, who Gronk thinks the best starting five would be of guys he played with. Maybe we'll get into that. Uh, and maybe he can't pick teammates. It has to be like opponents that he's faced and then a pr prolific career. What do you think? Did you do the homework, Gronk, Avi? Oh, Gronk, t yeah. What we wanted to do was I have to watch a movie, but now Succession is starting this weekend, so I don't have time to watch movies and watch Succession and Shrinking and Ted Lasso. With Ted Lasso, the first episode I wasn't excited about. So he told me, what did he tell me to watch? The Longest Yard. Gronk suggested that he just watch, can you imagine being Gronk and he's like, I'm in Tampa and I'm gonna go to the beach all day and then I'm gonna come home and I'm gonna, let's watch The Longest Yard and that's what he did. So he told me to watch that. I don't know who's in. I couldn't name you a person who's in that movie. I imagine it's about football. Yeah. Give me like the two sentence. Get over your hammer. Give me the two sentence on on this. Just just talk into it like that. Yeah. Hamilton, um, what's the longest yard about? Well, Adam Sandler uh, goes to prison, and for what? Isn't um, that the Gemstone movie? No, that's a different. He doesn't go to prison no. in that movie. Richard said, uh, "Jump gems. Richard would be good at a trivia night. Yeah, um, I last saw this movie like 15 years ago. So, but he goes to prison and they start a football team, and it's him and and Nelly's involved and and so Goldberg team in the prison. Yeah, and it's you know it's fun. There's a lot going on. Mm, sounds horrifying. Um, we were talking about Camelot. Yes, I went to see this, and I just and I said. I said on the show <laughs> that and a couple of minutes ago that I remember, I think rookie of the year or something, I swear is the only thing, the only, like no history, no like English class that I learned about this at all. But in, in a movie from our 90s life, did I know about Merlin and all of that? And I looked it up and I did a lot of Googling. I said, rookie of the year, movie Merlin. And it is a king, a kid in King Arthur's court. And that is, I believe, with Henry Rowan Gardner. Yeah, the actor that played Henry Rowan Gardner is in it. So I can see where the confusion came from there. And Thomas Ian Nichols. And it's another baseball. Why was he pegged as the baseball movie guy? A kid in King Arthur's court. Do you remember what it was about? He was in a cave and Merlin was there. No yeah, one knows? I think he, like, transports. This yeah, is Richard's, he is, this is he's Richard's big biggest fear. Yeah. Kareem Jackson is late on the train, so we're just trying to... A violent earthquake rocks Southern California. Hapless teenager Calvin Fuller... Harvey Rowan Gardner finds himself careening through a horn torn in the fabric of time. Calvin awakes in the Middle Ages where legendary sorcerer Merlin. So this is historical. Like it has to be. Merlin recruits him to rid Camelot of evil. Calvin must use his 20th century street marts to outwit the despicable Lord Belasco, an insidious nobleman 
determined to wrest control of the throne <laughs> from King Arthur. And that was a 1995, a classic. Richard? 5% on Rotten Tomatoes. Sounds fantastic. <laughs> oh, we got news. Let's go. Oh. Oh, That's we were just talking about Russell Wilson this morning. Ian says, quarterback Russell Wilson had arthroscopic, or, or, I can't say this ever. Arthroscopic. Arthroscopic surgery on his right knee following 2022, the procedure to fix an issue that he had napped him for a few seasons. He's back working out and throwing after the minor scope and should be fine for OTAs. He'll be at full health for 2023. I don't like the sound of this. Yeah, uh, I... That doesn't sound great. I mean, we know he was dealing with some injuries last year. We t you talked about that a lot. Um, I also have sympathy for him. I, I'm, I know what it's like to be nagged for a few seasons. He so. doesn't. God. He just, God. He doesn't uh, miss games. That's just like what I think about. Yeah. I think of Russell. He's missed what, like one game. Uh, he, he missed truly. a couple with that thumb injury, but that was the first time he'd missed missed any games in his entire career. He's he's as tough as it gets, and he plays through everything. He's so durable, and there's a lot to, you know, we were going to have Kareem Jackson, who completely stood us up on this program somehow, but, you know, he was somebody that I would like to see back with the Broncos. I think the Broncos need leadership on all angles to sort of help Sean Payton do what he wants to do in turning this team around in this gauntlet division. Uh, this, uh, you know, it's not Fifty Shades of an excuse for Russell Wilson because I don't think that's it. I don't think that he has that in him. I think he has like the he's super uh, tough as nails guy. He's like Justin Herbert in that way. Like in this, yeah. if you were to like you know power rank tough players, he'd be at the top of it potentially. Definitely. But this is not a good vibe going into no, this. No, a don't. minor scope. No thanks. Yeah. Um, and I mean, it's it's early enough that he should be back to full strength. Do you think something that minor? Also, I just I looked down at your computer. Can we talk about who else was in that kid in King Arthur's Court movie? King, Kate King Winslet Winter. and Daniel Craig. I don't remember. This that. is I like the most because they you know nobody knew who they were when this movie came out. Kate, so. listen, if you have seen a kid in King <laughs> Arthur's Court. Let me know. I can't believe it's five. Henry Roan Gardner has top billing over Kate Winslet and Daniel Craig in this movie. <laughs> he was Calvin. She was Prince. She was Princess Sarah. I love it. That, it's, I can't. The best parts. Did you ever see this movie? I probably did at some point when I was a kid. But uh, Are you guys telling me that you secretly knew all about Camelot and Merlin and all this like Guinevere stuff? Like you guys knew this stuff? I mean, I remember Somehow, like, Lancelot. reading. Tell me about Lancelot like then. Really? You don't know any. You don't know squat about Lancelot. I'm vaguely aware. You have no idea what's going on. We have other news, I hear. What's going on? We got more news. All right. Oh, <laughs> oh God, Richard. Oh. Richard's unhinged. Uh, the Panthers contingent took Ohio State quarterback C.J. Stroud out to dinner last night, met with him extensively. This group, minus the area scouts, will travel in mass to Alabama's pro day. <sighs> I fell asleep. Can you finish the tweet? <sighs> So Alabama has their pro day tomorrow with Bryce Young, Kentucky, and Will Levis pro day on Friday. C.J. Stroud's pro day, of course, is today. So all the top quarterbacks working out over the next yeah. couple of days. Do you days. think when they take them to dinner, they rush them out of the restaurant? <laughs> My, I have a new pet peeve. I have a new pet peeve. I had a, by the way, I am in on, I'm obsessed with five 5.30 dinners. Obsessed. Current upset. Run the animation for current obsession. Let's do that. Uh, yeah, it's time for wow, some current obsessions. <laughs> was, that, was that an ice cream sandwich? Is that what you guys yes. think of me? That's what I'm sure. It's just like oats and sprinkles. <laughs> no, it's uh, so oh, Sunday it was... Sunday toppings. I'm really into this five five thirty dinner situation. I don't know if it's living in Los Angeles and everything sort of happens there early, like games are early. So you know, usually in New York, you're used to going out at ten ten thirty at night. It's hard to get reservations in NYC. It's hard Hard to get reservations anywhere. So I'll take, I'm not embarrassed to go to a, an early bird special. And by the way, this restaurant I went to, Hot Spot in New York City last night, they, I, I couldn't have sat down and they're like, drinks, do you wanna order your main course now? What are you gonna eat? What are the, and I'm like, I don't know, I'm gonna, I, I'd like to sit here for, you know when you can tell they're rushing you out yeah, in New oh, York yeah. City, they're like, we need this table for our 7 p.m. guests. And I'm yes. like, I'm your 5.30 and I'll sit here and sip my coffee as long as I want to. I was drinking coffee at 5.30 at night. Decaf? No. No. <laughs> um, yeah, I had that happen in, in Brooklyn a couple months ago. It's not a good feeling. It's like, do you want me here? Like, if they don't want you there, they yeah. want you to get out of here. And, and I yeah. want to be like, listen, I get it. Like, well, we're going to order a ton of food. There's just two of us. And I'll tip you really well. Like, yeah. calm down. But they're just aggressive. And I just hate that. Yeah. And then I have to be me. You know, I got to be like, hey. I have to be me. Hey, yeah. lady, relax. I, I'm not a fan of that. But I am a fan. Are you a fan of an early dinner? 
Yeah. Currently obsessed. Yeah. I mean, I had a lot of early dinners when we were doing those those real early mornings. Um, yeah. You I know. didn't. I had nice late dinners during yeah. that time of my life. Okay. Yeah. That's what we're currently obsessed. Are you currently obsessed with anything? Um, Sugarfish's Trust Me menu, I like yeah, that. Yeah, that was great. Um, as I told you yesterday, I'm, I'm reading the Game of Thrones books right now, and I'm a little late to that. Does, but does I'm, everyone I'm know obsessed. this on our show? Who, who, who is doing this? This man, he's like, I'm on page 879 of 9,642, and I said, oh, that's really fun. They give you yeah. every perspective of every, like the Red Wedding scene from every, like from Caitlin Stark and from Arya and from whatever. I fell asleep sooner than I fell asleep during that Albert Breer tweet, to be honest. Poor Albert Breer. Yeah. Um, yeah for, and Richard, for me. Really quick, for Richard, the, for some, yeah. Richard uh, doesn't want to go on the show ever. He doesn't want to show his face. Mm -hmm. For someone who doesn't want that, he's chirping quite a bit in my ears. <laughs> 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 Richard, why don't you just come I'm on? Glad, and... <laughs> I'm glad I can't hear him right now because I'm sure it's all, it's all lovely. Okay, he, you, he, he you, you talk first. Content. What were you going to say? I apologize. Oh, no. You just asked my current obsession. I'm, I'm, I'm all in. Uh, those books are super enjoyable, and it's adding a, a great perspective to the show. And... Uh, the last two books haven't come out yet, and I've heard the ending's going to be very different from the way the TV show ended. You so, couldn't freaking pay me. You couldn't pay you me to read those books. Thrones. Well, this is the irony of this world, is that I tried to get him to watch Game of Thrones for six years on Good Morning Football, but I'd come in on Monday morning and say, oh, well, well, we, we, have, we have to talk about it. We have to talk about this, this Baratheon thing that just went on. we got to talk about that guy who's, like, feeding body parts to his dog. And he was like, this is so stupid. You guys are all idiots. You're so obsessed with Game of Thrones. And then three years exactly. after it yeah. ends, yeah. you decided to hop on board. Yeah. Super annoying. It's the best decision I ever made. It's annoying. Okay, are we going to take a break here? Do we have Gronk on the show? We'll be back. <laughs> the old world tight end, the six foot seven three. You can call me to go. Rob Gronkowski. Touchdown! Oh my goodness. Go, go, go. Holy Gronk, I'm only. The greatest of all time. Go, they call me go. All right, we're bringing in Rob Gronkowski. Well, that was some really good tap dancing that Hamilton and I did because Kareem Jackson, who's a free agent, is working out. We're having mimosas here in New York. Where, where are you, Gronk? Hey, what's up? I'm in St. Petersburg, Florida right now. Um, it's beautiful weather down here. It's about 75 to 80 degrees every single day. Not a cloud in the sky. That's where this tan is coming from because I'm outside about Woo! every single day. The sun's just shining on me, just making me glow. I love it down here. You look great, kid. You really do. Listen, I don't ever go to Miami. I'm in New York right now. I have a 21-babe bachelorette party in Miami this weekend. It's ultra this weekend. What is your Miami tip for Kay Adams and company? Yes. What do you say? It's a 20 what? 21-day 21 um, 21 21 trip? 21-girl bachelorette party. Oh, no, 21-girl 21 21 bachelorette party. Wow. That, that's pretty insane. That's one of the uh, biggest bachelorette parties I've you know, ever heard of 21 people. That's, that's a lot. And it's ultra, it's also ultra weekend. It's going to be mayhem. It's also spring break in Miami. I used to go down there a lot about, you know, eight years ago. And, uh, there's going to be a lot of traffic. First off, you got to plan around that traffic, but I would say anywhere okay. you go. I mean, if you're going to ultra, you know, you know what ultra is all about. That's a lot. That's a lot right there to do ultra with yeah. 21 girls. That's a lot. I would just say, Stay at the hotel, stay at the hotel pool, stay at the hotel, you know, dinner, dinner yes. restaurants, and uh, just keep it simple and easy. <laughs> I love that. Gr the fact that Gronk is saying that's a lot has me terrified. I'm absolutely terrified to be in Miami. Are you also pretending mm -hmm. that you haven't been to Ultra or anywhere in eight years? You said eight years ago you were in Miami. What are you talking yeah, about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just pretending. Okay. That is true. Come on, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not going that direction, all right? I'm just pretending. Yeah, I hear you. <laughs> You're a four-time Super Bowl champion. You are I'm a, a good boy. Family. I don't do stuff like that. I know. You're a, you are a very good boy, I sit home and I read books. Gronk. Listen, I, I know you do. I, I wanted you to go to the Derby with me, and you're like, nah. Like you're, you're a totally, you're a different Gronk. You were also, listen to this. You were at the Valspar Championship Golf Tournament. That was last Friday, and they asked you about what your master's menu would be. Let's listen to this clip. My menu would be cheeseburgers, chicken finger subs, uh, buffalo wings with blue cheese on the side, and, of course, my lovely ice shaker right here with an ice-cold beverage inside. 
Just getting a little tipsy at all times, baby. That's a pretty good. You are really tan there, Gronk. Yes, yes. I've been I've been outside a lot, but uh, we actually watched that interview uh, the night of when it came out. My brother and I and, and uh, Camille and we were dying laughing. And also, my favorite part of that interview was they were like, "You ever meet a professional golfer before? And who was and who has it been?" And I and I came up. And I was like, "Yeah, I met Shooter McGavin." <laughs> And that was on the interview as well. So that was one of my best and most electrifying interviews I've ever had. Uh, my menu, uh, I basically just named everything that I ate while I was in Buffalo. Uh, we had chicken finger subs in Buffalo. I mean, Buffalo has yeah. the best like food that I wouldn't say is the most healthiest for you. I would just say it has the yeah. best tasting food in Buffalo. You got the chicken finger subs that you can add some steak onto it as well. You put all the mayonnaise on it. Or the blue cheese, and let me tell you, they're Ooh. fire. Um, also, you can't go <laughs> wrong with a Ted's cheeseburger. You ever go to Buffalo? You ever go to Ted's uh, Ted's hot dogs? Let me tell you, they got the best cheeseburgers and fries out there. And then also Buffalo wings as well, because I'm from Buffalo. That's why I said wings with a side of blue cheese. So that's why that's, uh, that's where I came up with that menu. That's where I need to go for the bachelorette party. Why are we going to Miami when we can go to Ted's in Buffalo and get some mayonnaise and get some wings? We need to do that. Okay, <laughs> this is giving me, you know, you with the golf. You and Brady, the match vibes. Is that potential? You know, Jordan Spieth came on the show, and he said that Brady is the most competitive jerk when he's on the golf course with him in, like, a very endearing way. Have you golf with Brady? No, I never have. I've really never played any <laughs> golf in my life. The last time I played like a round of 18 it was about two years ago. And that was um, for my, uh, I think my brother-in-law's wedding party. And uh, that was the last time I played. It was early morning when we started as well. And uh, I wasn't really into it yet, but I'm telling you, I'm going to get into golf um, and I'm going to be a par guy one day. I'm going to be a par guy in about 15 years. I'm starting to feel the love of the game of golf. I have, a, um, there's a simulator up, in up north where I, where I go to this place and they have those golf simulators. And I started playing a couple rounds on those and I'm, I'm getting into the sport of golf. I'm starting to understand golf. I've always been living the fast life, but I'm starting to settle down a little bit more and be more calm. And I feel like the game of golf is going to be in my wheelhouse very, very soon. And I understand that you got to have the patience in order to get good. And also you got to have, um, you know, that skill set to just keep on, wrapping it out in order to, you know, put that mind to muscle, um, that mind to muscle. Well, what am I looking for? That mind to muscle uh, repetition muscle in memory? order to get good muscle as memory. well. Yeah, muscle memory. There you go. That's what I was going for. Uh, Gronk, you and Tom were together the other week, and you guys looked like you were having so much fun in that Florida sunshine. And then I'm thinking about this Aaron Rodgers to Jets thing. He's trying. He's kind of doing the same thing. He's going to a different team. He's going. He's changing conferences. He's recruiting guys, a la what Tom Brady did when he went to the Buccaneers and recruited you. How much easier was the transition to Tampa because you had Tom? And were y'all close to getting other guys like Edelman to join? Like, was that important to Tom Brady? Uh, you know, it was definitely awesome to be able to go to Tampa and just, you know, go with the quarterback that I've been playing with throughout my whole career. You know, it just made me feel super comfortable right from the very beginning um, to understand, you know, a new lingo, um, a, basically a whole new playbook. But to know that the quarterback I've been playing with through nine years was going to be right by my side and I was going to be right by his side as well, that definitely helped out. That played a big factor. That made us a lot more comfortable right from the beginning. And uh, also just the way that we, um, the way that we work together as well, kind of played a factor into it as well. Uh, we, we were always showing up to, you know, to re get the refs in, to do them at full speed in order to stay on the same page, get the chemistry down. Um, I feel like just yeah. Tom and I going in there together definitely showed a great example on, you know, on how, how, to get things done, how we want to get things done, how we want to go to a championship level. So it was just awesome, you know, just to have him by my side, you know, going to Tampa. And I would say for the same thing as well um, with Aaron Rodgers, you know, to have his, his star receiver, his number one receiver last year in Green Bay, go sign a big deal with the Jets. I feel like they're going to be able just to amp it up, uh, um, you amp it up to that high level right from the beginning. Instead of trying to feel each other out, you know, they're going to feel comfortable because they have each other. So they, I feel like they're going to be able to just 
hit full goal right from the beginning because of that reason. So were Mike Evans and Leonard Fournette and Chris Godwin, were they asking you questions when you got there? Like, how do I get Tom's trust? How do I, were they, were you giving them that sort of advice? Because you mentioned that deal by Alan Lazard, like Randall Cobb, there's rumors there. Like, are, how can they sort of give that information to the teammates? Is that how it works? How does it work? Yeah. Yes, 100%. Um, I would definitely say it, it works right along those lines. Um, definitely had some questions from other, some of, of a couple of receivers on Tampa Bay and of some of the couple of tight ends. Like, hey, how does Tom work? How do I get on the same page as him? Um, what does it take to, you know, gain his trust? And uh, that's what, you know, helped us out, both I, Tom and I, because I'm sure he had the same questions. Hey, uh, like, like, hey, Tom, like, like, how do I gain the trust of Rob? Like, and all that type of stuff, vice versa. And I would just tell him to go out there and be competitive out on the field. Go out there and be decisive and go out there um, and be consistent. Yeah. That's how you gain Tom's trust. You want to go out, be consistent, show him that you're going to get the job done every single time you hit the field. Not just have one good route one day and then the next day not, you know, be all over the place. Always be consistent with what you're doing. Always be very urgent, you know, being on your toes, ready to go every single practice. And if you're doing that, you're showing, you know, Tom, that you're going to you're going out there to be great, to be consistent. You're going to get gain that trust. And I'm sure they're going to be asking, um, you know, the guys that Aaron Rodgers brings over. Hey, hey, how do I gain his trust? And they can give an answer totally. and feel comfortable. Uh, Gronk, you're the man. You're a par guy. You love Ted's. You love chicken fingers. We love you. Your FanDuel family will talk to you. Uh, maybe a little sunscreen. I'm just saying, like, as I'm, I'm a little.